Regular monthly meeting, Monday, August 2nd, 2021, to order. Please rise to salute our nation's flag. Roll call, Supervisor Savavic, Cassiola, Flair, Aguizio in attendance, along with Planning Director, Assistant Manager Jack King, Sean Buckabinski, Police Chief, Engineer Dan Dizeroth, Township Solicitor Gretchen Moore. Citizens' comments. Comments will be taken at this time for any item to be voted on by the board that appears on the agenda. General Township comments or questions will be addressed after the Board of Supervisors' discussion of old business. Please step to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Hi, it's Harris Road, 158, North of Holly. Um, I had a question about 133, 2021. Uh, last month when we were here, we asked questions about what it was going to the Planning Commission. We didn't know for sure. Um, but there's no published Planning Commission agenda on the website. Between then and now, there was really no way to know if we could go hear about that at that planning commission meeting. So I guess a suggestion that there be some way that there are a bunch of people that want some more information on this particular topic. There's a way we could put what's being on held in the during the um, I'm sorry the zoning board meeting or anything that's being heard ahead of time that we can make it there. Uh, and also, how do I how do I personally get access to the information that was presented and approved? I don't think they even presented a plan yet. What what topic are we talking about? I don't see 123. Yeah. 133. What is it? 133. 133, 2021. Thank you. Presented to the planning commission and it was approved. What? It was all the planning all the planning commission did was recommend that the supervisors uh, hold the public hearing. So the public at the public hearing is the first step in the process. It's a cluster. Yeah, it's a clustered development. So they have to come in and make a presentation as a conditional use to the Board of Supervisors. So they've not submitted anything de detailed with the exception of a concept plan. And, and that's what was reviewed by the Planning Commission. It was reviewed by the Planning Commission. And it was put forth to the Board to recommend that a public hearing be held. So and at the public hearing, they'll present what the Yes. Plan yes. Okay. All right. And do we know is it are they filing as a PRD or is it under regular zoning? They're filing under R two as a clustered development. Okay. I'm sorry. R one is a clustered development, and the, and, and R one uh, it requires uh, the 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 density stays the same. Uh, you, you half of the property has to be open space. So they're only proposing out of 130 acres, they're only proposing to develop 65 of it. So at, so at the hearing, they will present a detailed plan. Yeah, that still. Will then be voted on. No, no, by, it's not a detailed plan. It's not like the plan that the, the planning it's, it's, to review after. It's a, it's a concept plan. If the board wants to approve this concept of cluster, a cluster development, or they say no, if you can develop it as just as R1 the way it is. If we approve it as a conditional use, then they'll go back to the planning commission with the regular subdivision with all the lines, lots, and, and where numbers. Where the entry and, point is, and if there's exactly. place. Well, they'll show an entry point on this, yeah. on this for their conceptual plan. Okay, so for, what for is us. being conditionally approved is a cluster plan. Right. A high level cluster plan. We didn't see that yet, we don't know. Right, that, that, that's what I'm asking. Like, if we don't have the information ahead of time and we're having a hearing about it, is there a way to have information ahead of time so that people, when they come to a hearing where something is going to be approved, have the ability to ask questions before something gets quote unquote? Well, we won't, we won't be voting on it at that okay. conditional use hearing. Okay. We'll close it, and then you have time to make comments to the Planning Commission to us about the plan itself. Okay, so there's no vote that happens. It's just the hearing and then sub subsequent meeting after that. If right, and, and if we, if after the conditional use hearing is uh, closed, 
uh, we'll go back and we might get comments from the residents or from the engineer or from the solicitor, but uh, we may then add, come up with conditions that we may say you have to do extra landscaping in this area, or we may uh, come up with s special conditions to approve it as a conditional use. It's basically a use by right with conditions. So, so we have to see their plan, and then uh, that night we won't say, well, here are, here are your conditions. We'll be seeing it for the first time just like you. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't other information that was either presented to the planning commission or being provided, you know, that could be provided ahead of time so that people coming to the hearing would be able to ask more important questions of that. that well, 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 you can ask us then. We'll be asking the same thing and adding if we need conditions. Okay. Now there are some base conditions in a conditional, you know, for the application itself. There are certain um, uh, required ones that are already in there, but we can add additional ones once we see their plan. Like if we don't like their entrance, okay, there's nothing about it as a standard on the, for an entrance yet. But if we don't like, we can add say the condition is you have to move that down the hill or up the hill or do this or right. take this hill out or something. Right. Or you know, there needs to be more wider road for parking or something. All those. Kind Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah, you don't and have to know those qu your questions yet. Okay. And that then there's a subsequent approval that has to happen at the planning commission level after this conditional use hearing and since we moved forward. Yes. Okay. All right. So I was at that meeting as well, and they, uh, board member Budovich uh, talked about it. Maybe a second entrance being made available. Uh, they had no uh, public space, public building community building or a, a swimming pool or park or anything like that. So those were some issues already brought up by the by the board. Okay, yeah, that's, that's good to know. Those are the kind of things that have come up here time and time again that would need to be done. Um, the other question I had was regarding item uh, resolution 141-2020. Regarding the subdivision of the Hillsborough Park Road, which would be the Right, so that's an excellent question. Um, there is a statute related to the ag security areas, and the statute provides for a board, um, and it's specific in what it requires. It requires three um, active farmers, one citizen resident, and one member of the local governing body. My, and, and I asked the same question today because I wasn't familiar with it. Um, and, and my understanding is here in Cecil, they had one a while ago, but it hasn't been um, active in many, many years, maybe since 2000. Uh, so my understanding tonight is the board is gonna start discussing what that looks like in terms of let's get that, that particular board going again. Um, and my recommendation is gonna be let's put it in a resolution too so we can see somewhere what that board looks like do they want to put terms on it? Um, under the law, it's at the pleasure of the board, but they could certainly put terms and you know some structure around the board. But it's just kind of defunct right now. Well, it's, I don't know if that it's defunct. What happens is uh, a property owner, you get some benefits if you get your property into an agricultural security district. Uh, when, years ago, when it first came about, we had people asking. You know, every month they come and ask to have theirs added to the uh, agricultural security acreage. And after a while, when everybody who was interested made their application it was they were accepted that board would act on it and then our board would act on it right then um uh it died off so i mean it's not that they were defunct so much as no one's asked in in all these years so, so does that mean there are new requests coming in for you know requests I, I don't i don't know what prompted or otherwise, this what is the duty of I, it's not just request to get in an ag security area it's also it's also the board has the duty of seeing who should be out based on the criteria if they believe people don't meet the criteria. So I believe it's um, new people in if, if certain property needs to be out. So it's establishment modification, termination of certain agricultural security areas. Okay, so but it has to do with the, the ag security areas, which okay, you, you have. Look at that and make that board would make recommendations which there would say would have to be approved or denied by the Board of Supervisors or if it's a stubborn It ultimately comes to this board. Okay. Board, open board positions need to be advertised on the website. He said there needs to be a listing. There's, this isn't listed as a board on the website. So in, in the spirit of transparency and making things you know, accessible to the public and knowledge of what's going on here, I would say that we should be listing that type of stuff and we should making it, make it be known 
that there's an open position there so that maybe other people, because we didn't even know about it, I'm sure the public doesn't know about it, if they had some interest in, if there were others that were interested in participating, that would give them an opportunity to apply. So that's my only question. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Ruth. It's still on. Is there a microphone? Jack. <laughs> Uh, Jeff O'Matic, 349 Grange Road, 142, 2021. Um, the Common Peace Court went in my favor, uh, but I am still going to subdivide my house. Uh, so it's up for review this evening if you're going to appeal it or not. But I just want to let you know that I am still going to subdivide. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution one thirty twenty twenty one. Consider application twenty twenty one dash zero zero one five for the Bell Landscaping Land Development Plan, contingent upon moving the sign to a location that complies with the ordinance requirements. Location 40 Cecil Henderson Road, C1 General Commercial Zoning District, applicant Oliver Real Estate Holdings, LLC. The Planning Commission recommended approval on July 15, 2021. What's wrong with where his sign is? Uh, we, we don't approve, signs are approved by separate application. Liz reviews those with different criteria, Ron. So we never, we never want to sign on a site plan approved. <coughs> that's, a, that's a zoning officer decision. So well, sometimes we get trapped with somebody who shows them, hey, you approved that location and it doesn't meet the requirement. So. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. I have a question, Dan. Uh, it's just so hard to see on ours. Sure. It, it's it's really the the same layout that was before Tom. They're proposing the existing buildings here up front. Uh, the storage of the materials would be uh, they have bins located here and here back off of the road. Uh, they have some landscaping proposed in the front. <laughs> Uh, they verified that the sewage system that they have on site works. Uh, this building here is just going to be uh, for storage, and that's it. Uh, no sanitary sewer connection, no offices, no anything else in it. So that's the only building that they're proposing right here. And their land development is just limited to this, kind of this little envelope right around here is all they're doing any work. Uh, and the big issue was the, you know, this as a uh, the zoning decision as to this is what's the operation here. Uh, they they uh, provided their uh, business plan to the zoning offices, or as I understood it, as a uh, uh, a landscaping company, not a contractor's yard, and they're just going to operate. Uh, they operate. Uh, it will operate a retail business out of here, in addition to the uh, their landscaping operation. Right, Any more questions? Okay, we have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Resolution 131 2021. Consider application 2021 0020 for the Claffic subdivision plan contingent upon addressing comments from the township engineer. Location 416 Coleman Road, R1 Low Density. Residential Zoning District, applicant Cecil Claffick. 
the Planning Commission recommended approval with the contingency on July 15, 2021. Yeah, and they've uh, since addressed all of our comments, so all the technical comments have been addressed. Uh, I just wanted to focus in on the, uh, all they're doing here is a subdivision and consolidation. Uh, they're taking this line out uh, and they're combining it with what they call, uh, they have lot two here and lot a, uh, lot A and two are combined together. It's just a two lot subdivision at the end of the day, uh, which will have the dwelling and lot two, and then there'll be one more lot, which is lot three. It's two lots right now. There'll be two lots in the end. So they're just they're just changing where the uh, where the lines are going to be located uh, to create the new lot. So this lot gets bigger, and this one gets a little bit s smaller. I'm going to make a motion to approve that. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Resolution 132 2021, consider application number 2021 0021 for the revised Dominic Delbo Platt Adjustment Plan. Location 10 Muse Bishop Road, C2 Convenience Commercial Zoning District. Applicant Robert Mikulski. The Planning Commission recommended approval on July 15, 2021. I got a couple problems with that. One, you have no ENS in, and that muddy water's going right down in the creek. And two, it looks like you're just storing all your equipment there. Three, you hauled in wood to burn there and shrub. You gotta put in there, so. Well, well, let's. We can we can focus on that issue, but I think the the issue at hand is a subdivision plan. So, is there a grading application in yet, Mr. Mikulski? Um, right now, it's, it's in the court, but we're trying to resolve. We had the subdivision already approved. Right. This is just a revision to that. So Right. That that that's the issue at hand. But are you working on the property? I just have equipment sitting there right now. Oh, okay. We clear. We store a house now. We do have permits for. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. And there was some shrubs and debris actually from the neighbor that we pulled over there and we put it in a burn pile and we obtained a burning permit, burned it, and there's still some substance in the house in that there. Burn it. Well, there was a burning permit before we burned it. Supervisor Flair, I'll take up your issues with the zoning office tomorrow, but what's before you tonight is just a revised subdivision plan. So we're not giving any approval to any site work here. This is just to revise the lot lines and correct them. This plan was approved pr prior, prior, and as Mr. Mikulski said, they've hired a new surveyor to correct it, so they're putting a new plan on record. Uh, that's all you have before you tonight. Where, where did it move, or is that illustrated, or do we see I, the old one? I believe one? that the lot lines, you see a, a dash, these dashed lines on here. 
these represent where the line was before. It, it's really a matter of the surveyor's issue. I think the same intent uh, was there, but I think, Bob, there was a... The he, front line was off. It wasn't straight with the road. Yeah. It was four foot off from the left side of the line. I think we actually lost a little bit of the property because um, our other surveyor had the property line. It just wasn't straight with the road. And whenever we... Because it's so many of the different things being involved here with the uh, stormwater water management plan, highway occupancy, First thing we wanted to do was correct the survey since it wasn't right before we moved forward. In the industry, this is called a corrective subdivision. When somebody makes or sets a property line wrong or does something wrong and there's a mistake made, you typically file a corrective subdivision. So this supersedes the previously approved recorded plan and corrects the sur makes the survey correct. And Mr. Mikulski can feel comfortable going ahead with his land development. So you'll, you'll see the land development back before you if it happens. Was there an error in omissions? Did he get his money back from the first guy? I don't provide those type of opinions. All right. What's this going to be, Bob? What do you intend on doing here? Thanks, Bob. Right now, I just have I have a couple trailers parked down here, and I have a, a cabin in front of the truck. Right, I, I decided to move that stuff down there because of the fact that we could not and other people there without the furniture and everything else. There. I don't think it would work. It is what it is. I mean, like I said, I'm not worried. I don't have cameras up. I'm not here 24 7 with rules and requirements. You know, we did when we first started. Any more questions? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. aye. Passes 4 0. Resolution 133 2021. Consider setting a date for a public hearing regarding conditional use application 2021 0 2024 for the Silver Creek Cluster Housing Development. Location, Rising Road, R1, Low Density Residential Zoning District, Applicant, Miranda Homes. The Planning Commission recommended approval contingent upon addressing comments from the Township Engineer on July 15, 2021. Okay. What are the comments? Yeah, what contingencies are... Um... Contingencies of the, of the Planning Commission? Uh, I'm not... Yeah, I, th there were some minor things that they've already corrected related to the uh, conditional use application. The application so itself. Yeah, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, that's all. Just on that big application. Is this meeting with that work at uh, 6 o'clock before next month's meeting? No. no? You anticipate? This should be separate before August 17th. August 17th. We need a special meeting, though, too, then. Well, I mean, Eric, if, even if we could have done it before our next public meeting, 
I don't think an hour is enough time. There could, there'll be a lot of it's interest. Two weeks. Yeah. Right, it'd be just a stand, stand, stand alone, yeah. What about two weeks, 16th, one day? I'm good. I'll make it work. Do we have enough time to advertise? Yeah, we can get an ad in this week and next week. Do they have something scheduled, uh, Jack? No, this is, this is here, conditional use. Here. Zoning hearing board meets is on it? the 16th. Okay, do okay. they have an alternative? How many things do they have on, Jack? Uh, two, two as of right now. That will be advertised within the day. I mean, big issues or minor? No, it was a five-foot fence that I once put up. Oh, I read that, yeah. yeah. I forget the other one. Is anybody on the 23rd? We, no, it's too late, she said. It has to be by the... It's by the 17th. Well, yeah, they'll, they'll move. I mean... We, we can ask the zoning board to go next door. They'll, uh, they said it's sort of two minor issues they have. We'll have probably a lot of people here. That's okay. fine. Okay. Um, seven o'clock. Yeah. August sixteenth at seven o'clock. Resolution 134-2021, consider application 2021-0025 for the Dominic Delbo Plan of Lot Subdivision Plan, location 17 Muse Bishop Road, C2 Convenience Commercial Zoning District, applicant Dominic Delbo. The Planning Commission recommended approval on July 15, 2021. Uh, this is just another... Uh, this is another uh, elbow track that's located off of Moose Bishop Road. And, um, we're creating uh, a separate lot here, lot number one. And uh, it has a sanitary sewer easement. It will have a public sewer. Um, all of our conditions have been met. Uh, the lot complies. It's a 1.369-acre uh, lot that's being created. Is this across the street, uh, Dan? From yeah, it's kind of catty corner from where we are. I mean, this is Dennis Flair property. It's a little bit further up from East Bishop Road. You know where that is? Yeah. So this is right across the street from there. There's an existing dwelling there, so it's a little bit further up. So the house would be up located further, a little further past that. There's the site, Frank. There's a... There's a site location map here. It shows you a little bit further. There, there's mute. If you can see down in the corner there where my cursor is. This is 980 right here. This is Moose Bishop Road. So it's just a little bit further up the road. What's the intent on uh, placing here, Dan? Uh, th there hasn't been any, uh, nothing submitted. In of any application uh, for the property yet. Okay. So we don't have, we don't know what they want to do with it. All we're doing is subdividing the lot. What's their letter do? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Resolution 135-2021, consider rescinding the previous approval for the Omega Building Company land development for a self-storage facility and approving the conditional use and site plan as follows. Number one, receiving written notification from West Penn Power to use their right of way. Number two, applying the notice of the requirement of a state highway occupancy permit per section 504C-25F of the Township UDO to the land development plan. Yeah, so, so explanation on this, uh, last month the board approved this change to the plan which was previously approved. Uh, they're proposing one building, a one cell storage building on here. And <clears throat> as I understand the discussion, uh, they talked about using access from 
South Point Boulevard to come in and build this building. Uh, we had been given some information by the property owner, Tom Robinson, and his attorney uh, related to that access off of South Point Boulevard. I provided that information to the township solicitor, and it does appear that uh, Mr. Robinson does have legal access off of that portion of the road. Uh, that being said, the township's requirement, and, and the only thing that we're required to do in terms of policing is to make sure that there's a note put on the plan that notifies the property owner that if they do need a state occupancy, highway occupancy permit, it's their requirement to get. So if it puts, it sort of takes us out of the picture so we don't police that. I don't recommend that we get involved in the policing of the state of highway occupancy permit because it's not our, of our interest, it's a third party permit and all of our approvals are, are, are typically based upon them getting that on their own. So um, the problem is the way that the, the recommendation for approval was written last, last month, it was requiring correspondence from PennDOT saying that he had access. They're never gonna give him that letter. Uh, they've already requested that from him. So this is kind of a battle between the property owner and, uh, and PennDOT, and, but I think they're gonna let him use it, in my opinion, and probably just turn their head because they don't they don't really have a footing to stand on not to give them the access so um, for construction for construction yeah and and uh, he has another site that he submitted to the township for, uh, to create a fill site up above here we've not acted upon it yet because we were waiting on that information that he provided so there is more to come up here um, you know in terms of what mr. Robinson wants to do with this property and again <clears throat> Gretchen can give her opinion, but I, I think that we cover ourselves. The note has been added to the plan already, and so all we're waiting on is them to get approval from West Penn Power to work within this right away, and, and they understand they have to get that. So that's the reason for the redo on the approval. I thought West Penn Power owned that right away well, on the 79. I, I believe that it's it's a right of, they have they have an overhead right away. People use the word. They, they have different meanings depending upon how the way it's written. It's my understanding is that the applicant is allowed to do stuff underneath their subject to their rules and regulations. So they have to get West Penn Power to give them that approval to work under there. Oh, well, Bill, who gave you the right of way in and out of there? They don't own it fee simple. Bill, who gave you the right of way to go in and out for a salt dome? For the salt up there. I've never, I've never received formal approval for, from anybody, except that we have a good relationship with uh, West Penn Park. Uh, we, we have, and we don't have a formal agreement with them. We've always maintained the roadway back into their substation, and for that, they provided us with a uh, source of power at no charge to the township. And the site uh, itself. If, if you go out there at night when, uh, when uh, Mark and Randy are out there operating our big trucks. It's like PNC Park up there. That's the kind of lighting they put in. And they provided us with a 220 outlet to put our uh, block heater, or plug our block heater in for our uh, uh, loader equipment. So it's just an exchange of services with West Penn Park right now. We don't have, a, a, as far as I know, any type of formal agreement with them. Okay.
she needs to answer that question. So I think he's referring to the previous conditional use opinion that you all had the hearing on, and there was the issue of whether he was landlocked, and it was kind of a self-created situation, and that was a separate opinion. That was different than this particular situation. So that that issue isn't an issue in this hearing, or the hearing that you all held last last month. I don't understand how it's not relevant. If it's uh, if I have right away going in there, why wouldn't Robinson have? In the township, township and the unit, why wouldn't I have? Why wouldn't Robinson have? So nothing about your decision last month spoke to legal right of ways and access. You know, we did a legal opinion as to what happened with the deed transfers and who has legal access. That had nothing to do with your decision last month's hearing. And Dan, uh, Rick asked that, uh, is it just for constru construction or? or well, he's gonna bring his heavy trucks in that way for his I mean, landfill. Just, just for that or to access that property later? As he uh, builds his building. There's no plans to do anything and access off it for like the public or anything like I, that. I was curious. It's just construction. That's all that I've been told at this point. So again, it really has nothing to do with us. If, if he gets a, if he has to get a PennDOT permit, he will, he has to. It's correct. on the plan, in other words. That's correct. So you're saying if I go to do anything on my, my property, I'm going to have to get uh, PennDOT approval? And if they say no, then that means I'm landlocked. Want me to answer that? I, I think. I'm not sure I understand the question. I think, Dennis, Dennis, I think, I, think the same, I think the same information that Mr. Robinson provided, I'm not sure if that applies to your property or not, but he, he, he provided a legal opinion that he had title to the driveway that touches the property, which comes off of South Point Boulevard. I'm not sure if your property has that same that same title. When PennDOT did the taking up there, did they grant access to your property also? He invested in, in a lawyer to do the research and, and, and give him an opinion, which he provided to the township, that says that he has legal access to the, to the highway. Whether or not PennDOT <laughs> says he can use it or not, that's a whole different subject. That's all we're talking about here tonight. And we're not even talking about this property that's in front of the board tonight doesn't even touch that driveway. It just happens that Mr. Robinson owns the property adjoining and he plans to use it to construct this site so he doesn't come in through the little development there while he's building this. That, that's, that's all we're talking about. So we're not, we're not really rendering any opinion on your property tonight or talking about that access at all other than, you know, if he needs a permit, he needs a permit. That's all we're talking about. I can review it with you off the record. I can, I can, I can talk to you about it. Okay. Do I have a resolution on uh, 135-2021? Second. All right. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Passes four nine. Resolution 136-2021, consider approval of pay application number one in the amount of $67,761 to Thornbury Incorporated for work to date on the Ridgewood Drive Bridge. As the board has seen, the work has started on the bridge. They've completed the demolition. I drove by tonight and saw that they're already forming the uh, repairs to the abutments. Uh, so uh, we verified this amount of money that's... Uh, to be paid in accordance with the contract and would recommend payment. Do I have a motion? I'm gonna make a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Resolution 137-2021, consider approval of pay application number one in the amount of $93,397.50 to Independent Enterprises Incorporated for work to date on the Creedmoor Street Bridge. Project uh, work has been started and advancing, and uh, this is for work complete to date uh, that the contractor's completed in accordance with the contract documents and would recommend payment in this amount. I make a motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Three yes, one abstain. Resolution 138-2021, consider the purchase of two F-550 
550 dump trucks with plow and spread at a cost of $94,637 each. The units will be purchased under CoStar's contract 25-032. Uh, Supervisor Gizio, this uh, was uh, conditionally approved in May to move forward with the purchase of two 550s. Uh, and the condition uh, at the time was to get back to the board with the actual cost. And we were finally able to nail down the actual cost. Of course, uh, vehicle prices are in a state of flux right now. Uh, and we have a 30-day execution on the order for these trucks uh, at a cost of 94637 each. A total cost for both trucks would be 189274 We're requesting uh, formal authorization to move forward with the purchase this evening. One second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Thank you. Budget this year. You're welcome. Cool. Resolution 139, 2021. Consider a fireworks display for the Cecil Township Fall Festival at a cost of $3,500. I'd like to maybe make a motion to, that this be tabled. I'd like the opportunity to speak with the Parks and Rec Board and just see if there's a better venue that this would maybe work for. It was at the, the last fireworks for the Fall Festival and if you think about it, the fall festival's over at five, six o'clock, and then everyone's gone, everything's locked up, all the booths are shut down. So I watched them down by the concession stand with about six other people, the workers mainly, and I think only, I don't know what, 20, 25 people saw the fireworks all together. So maybe it'd just be more appropriate if this was something tied into just a better event, maybe a uh, night at the movies or movies in the park, just something other than uh, Fall Festival when everything's shut down. I, I feel they're um, planning to fill that time gap in there from when the festival shuts down to when the fireworks actually take place. Um, that's what I've heard. So two, possibly another band. Two and a half, three hours. Yeah, I don't, I, I just don't uh, I mean, feel that that's the right, right place for it. We're, we're talking that time of year, it probably gets dark, uh, what, 8, 9, 8 o'clock? No, I mean we're into we're into what the end of September where it's getting dark at probably uh, seven seven thirty. So there's a small time frame you have to fill a gap with possibly a band scheduling maybe another hour. Yeah. No. Well, the same thing happens. They close down at six or seven. You're there because you're always there working, but. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's just maybe not the appropriate event. I don't know. I asked a motion on the floor to table it just to ask the parks if there was something better. Can't they just stay open longer? Jack, was this scheduled for a um, Saturday or a Sunday night evening? It's scheduled for Saturday. Yeah, which I think would be appropriate. I mean, the right place, time to do it. Are you willing to go to the parks board and talk to them about something new? I would. Another event? I can't hurt do we have, or Do we have a time limit or what's the, what's the issue to put this through? Well, yeah, there's a purchase of uh, fireworks in that. It has to be, you know, um, purchased in advance. How many do you think were there that last time? I mean, I mean, the weather got bad. It got windy. We were threatened with a rainstorm, and it held off where he was able to uh, perform the show. I, I was down here outside the building with, uh, I don't know, a couple dozen people, and right, then you okay. were up at, at the concession stand. But, I mean, I think the weather played a factor in that evening, you know, scaring people away. But uh, if they're willing to fill that time slot a little closer to the fireworks, you know, with a band playing another hour or something, I think would be good. I also think there were a lot of people sitting in a parking lot in their cars. I saw some cars by the basketball hoops as well, but it just wasn't a, it is, you know, we're, do we want the draw for the festival? Is it part of the festival? The festival was shut down two hours earlier. You know, uh, do we want people going through the park? There's no... No lights for any of the booths or any of that stuff. You know, the, um, the booths may be interfering with the park lights for walking through the uh, paths. It's an after, after our event. I just put a motion on table to uh, motion to table. Do they need uh, to get them ordered now? Is that, is that the point, or can't wait till yeah. the beginning of September? Yeah, no, you would have to purchase in advance fireworks. Yeah. You couldn't wait that long close to the show. I'll tell you what, he did a phenomenal job last time. Yeah. I mean, we had all the fire protection there and everything. I think his point is that if we yeah. a separate event, some, some night event at the park, we do fireworks feature and some event. 
Well, can't we try and schedule more events so it doesn't close out early? Yeah, probably a good idea. Do I have a motion on the floor? I have a motion to table. I have a second. Hmm? He, he's making a motion to table it. Do I have a second? Take a vote. Yeah. I'll make a motion. We go through with the fireworks. I second it yeah. to go through with the, the fireworks display. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Passes three. But, but I, I think we do need to talk to Parks and Rec Board and see if what we can do in that time period. I'm sure they will schedule something that can be worked out. Passes 3-1. Resolution 140 2021 considered a July 27, 2021 letter from the Parks and Rec Board to add alcohol sales at the Fall Festival managed by the Muse Fire Department. Any Here's discussion? Your answer on I, what to I do. think that should be managed by all the fire departments. That's your answer on what to do, yep. I don't know if the police are like that. I really think it should be managed by all three fire departments so they can all draw some money from it. Again, uh, we would have the police department oversee it, stage in that area up there, because we all know what can happen, one bad apple. So, Chief, you can help out up that end. <laughs> what will you do? Well, we're just going to be walking it's, around. It's we can't on. ever. It's not on. We can't oversee it, but of course, if there's a call, public in talks, I mean, we just encourage whoever's be responsible of serving, keeps an eye on. If someone has too much, don't serve them. Um, but of course, you know, we can't really be around it, um, the location, but we're there if needed. From what I understand, it's um, they've rented pavilion number three. Is that correct, Jack? Okay, so it's sort of be away from uh, the other events. The one suggestion about all three of them. Yeah. They, would there other departments well, that, that's, I mean, that's up to uh, Cecil three and uh, one Lawrence and Cecil three if they yeah, want to partake. Or Max. Dan, are you interested? Well, we've rented the uh, pavilion number three to Muse Fire Hall. Does that relieve us of liability? <coughs> I mean, Muse uh, Fire Department has the liquor license. Cecil Township does not. So by renting them the uh, pavilion three, that falls under their liquor, liquor license. Okay. And you all have a standard uh, like vendor rental agreement that, you know, once they're a renter, it, they would enter into that agreement, and there's a liability provision in there as well. So... That helps. It helps, yeah. Do I have a motion on the floor? I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in we favor? Have discussion? Sure, go ahead. Uh, so is this going to be amended? Is it going to say all the Cecil departments that will want to participate? Well, well they don't, they don't know. They Can we license. do that? I understand, yeah. but I don't think decided to Well, you could open it to Lawrence. You could open it to Lawrence Fire Station. Yeah, and I just have a verbal agreement. But that's maybe what I'm after. If they want to participate and assist, let's amend it to include Cecil Fire Department. That's fine. I mean, are they, they're going to have to police some too. Absolutely. I mean, if somebody's not buying beer and taking it out to kids. That's 
one of the reasons we have them over here. So it's one of the reasons we're uh, suggesting putting it at Pavilion 3. It's across the stream. Uh, there'll be uh, entrance um, guards, basically. Uh, the package that uh, ultimately Parks and Recreation would like to offer is a T-shirt, a plastic uh, Cecil Township uh, logo mug, and um, one beer with one refill. Anything after that is going to be ticketed, uh, and that'll be handled by the fire departments. Yeah, if they can't get over the hump, they had too much in the bridge. Sorry. Yeah. If they can't get over the hump in the bridge, they've had too much. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, question on the motion. Okay, we had a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Eric, you know, you said I passes four zero. Resolution one four one twenty twenty one considered recommendation of active farmers John Yago, Bruce Gasvoda, and Paul Sharkety as agricultural security zone board members. So let me just raise before you all consider this that you know, Ms. Sheridan made a good point at the beginning that. Um, we have a resolution related to open boards and open positions. Um, you could consider tabling. not tabling it today, posting something, and when you post something on the internet, you can actually describe what it is. You could cite to the statute to describe the board, um, who's on it, and, and what their duties are, and then get some interested people, I'd and then just come back. Make the September. motion to table this. Well, I, I was saying to Tommy. I, I think they have a board already because I know Brian McConnell was on it. Elizabeth. There was, yeah, there is a board and it, it met a, a long time ago. I think not since 2000. It, from, they've met a lot and of in, yeah. But they have other duties other than adding to um, the ag security area. This particular board statutorily has, has duties related to. Um, they advise you all and work with the Planning Commission in relation to proposed establishment modification and termination of ag security areas. They render expert advice relating to desirability of the action, advice related to nature of farming and farm resources within the area. So they have and a broader... They, they, they have like not a charter, but whatever, what, a, a board, um, like an outline. So I don't think they were required to meet any certain amount of times other than just to do duties as they came up. Sure. Statutorily, it just says there, there is a board, um, and these are the things they should be doing. Now, so the, suge the suggestion is just to table this until um, um, you can so put it on the website. Advertise. And, yeah, you we have can, a motion you and Tommy seconded. You can add the language to the website so that people understand what, you're, you know, what the board is and what you're looking for, vote on in September, and perhaps even draft a little rest, short resolution so that in for your formal... Um, you know, right. records, you have something that says, okay, this is the board and this is how you all have established it with terms and things like that. So, Frank, you have a motion and a second? To table. To table. table. All those in favor say aye. 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 To what? To table? To table. Ron. What's your vote on? Aye. Yeah. Passes 4-0. Resolution 142, 2021, considered a motion to appeal decision of a common, common pleas to Commonwealth Court related to the OMATIC zoning matter. In regards to Jeff speaking beforehand and saying that he was going to rezone the property, resubdivide it, uh, I would make a motion to consider not appealing the decision of the Court of Common Pleas to Commonwealth Court related to the OMATIC zoning matter. I'm going to second that. Well, discussion as far as um, this is zone residential, correct, right now? Correct. What's the time frame for this? So this wouldn't be um, due until uh, mid-August, August 18th, I believe. Um, and just that you all understand, and I've updated you with my legal advice, but there is a concern it, about someone saying they're going to subdivide and then actually doing it. That was a concern throughout this hearing, which has lasted about a year now in terms of the hearing and appeals. We would all, and the township would be happy if they did subdivide. That would resolve the problem, but right. I'm not sure it would be done before the time to appeal, which is mid mid August. I'm sorry, I think it's August 18th. Then I, then I will amend that motion so that we add the uh, condition that we get at least get a letter from uh, the 
property owner saying that he'll subdivide it. I would second that amendment. So you're saying if you got a just, just with a, a letter. letter saying they intend to do it, you don't want to appeal? Right. That's right. Okay. I would still have concerns that it oh, right, right, it's right, just right. a letter that might not ever get why, done. Why wouldn't we hold to what if, what if the what if the <laughs> people won't approve the let the subdivision go? Wait, say it again. Say it with your microphone. What if the, the, the concern on the subdivision all along has been that if Mr. O'Matic attempts to subdivide that the DEP is going to require comprehensive sewage for the rest of the property. So it's not as simple as just getting a, um, a, a an all about permit for the lot that he's intending to subdivide. So right. it might not be as straightforward as Yes, you I just have. I just provide that as background that you know although the intent might be there to subdivide there might be a environmental impediment in the way. And just additionally, you all have my opinion on just the implications and precedent that some of the language in the order may set for other um, properties in the township. And that's, I already sent that to you all for consideration and that's something I think that's important for the township. And further to discussion, or I would lean on the side that the property owner would be permitted to do what he'd like within reason. Within reason. If there is a subdivision, there would be no problem. And even if there's an appeal and there's a subdivision, it's not a problem because that, that cures the problem. Well, not, and not, if the township not. wants to withdraw an appeal at some point in the future, um, well, that, that's well, fine, too. Dan said that doesn't even necessarily solve all the problem. There's still the matter of the on-lot uh, disposal, right, Dan? That, okay. that would be part of the subdivision process. Well, but, but I think Jeff's getting rid of most of the trailers, right, Jeff? And the only thing you wanted to subdivide off was your house. Now, them trailers aren't separate lots, are they? I'm, I'm, I'm not against this or whatever. I'm just saying that there's been inquiries made to the DEP on this matter, and the DEP said that they are going to, uh, you know, they're, they're going to want all the trailers addressed, too. On the what? The trailers yeah. on the remainder of the property before they would approve a planning module. A planning module is required for any subdivision in the Commonwealth if you're creating a lot. So that, that's a requirement. Uh, you can make the attempt, Mr. O'Matic. I'm just saying that, that we, I mean, we, I think we went down this route already. I, th I think we were trying to look at a subdivision before, but that's the difficulty. I mean, maybe they'll change their mind, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm just telling the board that it's, that, that it's going to be a challenge. Uh, how many trailers are going to be left? But they're all wildcat, Ron. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. And then the motion on the board is not to appeal the decision of the Court of Common Pleas. So I'm a little, a little tired of all the litigation going on as well. So I'm saying do not appeal the decision of the Court of Common Plea. You make that motion there? How soon you plan on something to ride? We would. What's that? Because he said that doesn't solve the problem. I thought it did. So the motion, Frank, is Tom's that stated that there would be a letter put together for a not to appeal the court decision. From the Common Police Court of Commonwealth Court. Well, wait, I do have one more question, then, Dan. So, if it takes the DEP a while to do anything more about it, what, what's the consequence to not having appealed? Then you have no leverage to do anything. But if the DEP isn't going to uh, allow something that he wants to do, it has nothing to do with us on, on, on what they're dealing with. So, he couldn't do things separate from us anyway. I mean, even if uh, we were out of the picture. The DEP still has a, their, their 
permitting it in the process, right, Dan? I mean, they they control whether we would be able to to subdivide. Yeah, to subdivide. If it they say no, have a 10 acre it exemption? can't be subdivided. I thought, do you have a 10 acre exemption? You can't have it for multiple. You can't have it. You still can't put no, multiple. Multiple. Not, not with multiple house, acres. Ten acres. So if the, if the solicitors tell us that, like what Dan said, that we can't even do a subdivision. Approving a subdivision if the DEP won't approve a planning board. Or it would be costly. Is that what you, is it is it possible, but you're saying more costly for that for the DE what the DEP wants? Well, the DEP would want comprehensive sewage on the whole property. Right. So I I don't know what the solution is for Mr. O'Matic to service the remaining uh, units that are on the site, but it would based upon what I know, it wouldn't be Again, we don't control that it's, process. Yeah, we're not in that part of the process. Yeah, that, I, I'm just, I'm just let, but I, I, I agree with Supervisor Cassiola. I mean, we're not one way or another. Just, just know that all I wanted you to know was the subdivision is not guaranteed. He can make application for it. He can make application for the planning module, and uh, and see if it, see if it goes. But um, it's highly unlikely, based upon what they know. Can we table this or no? The appeal deadline is mid-August. Pardon me? The appeal deadline is mid-August. It's just, well, just, we, for, the, just we, for the notice of the filing of the appeal. We're having a... Um, um, 17th. Yeah, we're having a meeting anyhow. We can advertise that. 16th. 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 Is the 16th too late? That's near the middle, but it's not... Mm -hmm. No, I can get the exact date. Oh, actually, it's on my for report. For what objective? What would you be looking for, Tom? Um, See if a taxpayer has the right to do something uh, on his property. 818. 818, yeah. We've gone down this road before in, in South Point on Ironwood where a, a property owner it came to us with a subdivision. He was legally entitled from 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 our ordinance to uh, uh, subdivide some property there off of the, the Ironwood. The, the neighbors around objected to it because um, all their sales literature showed that it was all supposed to be left as green space. Well, they wanted us to stop it, and, and, and we couldn't. So uh, because. Um, it, it sales literature doesn't affect how our ordinance is written. We had to approve that subdivision. They went to court, and, and the, the uh, court ordered us to reverse that subdivision and, and take it off of them. So that basically the residents won on that issue. With the DEP, I think what Dan's saying, that if they don't go along with the subdivision, we won't have a subdivision, yet we'll still have that issue that sets precedent uh, for, uh, for our ordinance if it's at least not appealed. Correct. How long would it take to wait? Wait one more thing. How long would it take to go th through an appeal process once it's filed? So appeals to the Commonwealth Court are running about a year. I mean, you file the notice of appeal, and then there'll be a briefing schedule. That's probably be a couple months off, and then an argument will be scheduled, and then it's waiting for a decision. Well, how much? Uh, a year or so. Mm -hmm. Well, so I mean, that would give him time to work on that to see if uh, if he can go through that with the DEP, right, Dan? Investigate it, yeah, sure. Well, if we appealed and there was, there was no issue with what Dan mentioned, it's still, it's still going to be that same year for Commonwealth Court to do what they're going to do. I mean, once there's, if there's an appeal, whether it's based on this subdivision or not, it's still a year or more, like she said. Well, if not, I guess not if there's an appeal. But it could be settled out, right? I mean, it, it, could, it could be settled if, if, uh, if, if the, they issue that um, permit that Dan's talking about, then it, it, the appeal could be dropped, right? Uh, of course. It could always be withdrawn and a resolution reached another way. Well, at least give us the Frank Weeks schedule. Um, a special meeting before our hearing on uh, the 16th? 16th it is. 16th? That's yeah. at 7, it's even 6.30? 
Okay. It'll be a special meeting mm -hmm. at 6.30 back on this, and then uh, go right into the conditional use here. Okay. I'm, is everybody fine with that? Yeah. All right. All right. Eric, you okay? 6.30? August 16th. Yeah. Well, how are you going to deal with We have a motion and a... Well, we, we make, table. Take, I mean, make a new motion. Motion to, to table. To table the... You want to, is that what you want? Yes, the table. Table this to, uh, go ahead, Tom, you say it. This to the special meeting on the 16th at 6.30 p.m. Do I have a second? I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4-0. Resolution 143-2021, consider revised phase one and phase two addendum to developer's agreement for the Traditions of America plan. So if, if you recall last fall, there was addendum to both of these related to the Han Road Bridge and you passed a resolution related to that. Um, there have been modifications made to the bridge component of it. They've been agreed upon between Dan and the developer. Uh, so these two addenda, which I, I sent to you all um, just amend the developers agreements for those two phases and address the the bridge scope of work second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed passes four zero resolution one four four twenty twenty one considered appointment of jason wheeler to the parks and recreation board to serve until january twenty twenty five Make a motion. Moved. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Thank you, Jason. Resolution 145 2021. Consider the Board of Supervisors regular monthly minutes from the Tuesday, July 6, 2021, Cecil Township Board of Supervisors regular monthly meeting. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Resolution 146 2021. Consider the general fund invoices from July 1st through July 31st, 2021. Do I have a motion? I make a motion. A second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes 4 0. Board of Supervisors discussion of new business. Any new business? Uh, maybe old business. Old business? Go ahead, Eric. Just that there was circulating the ABB uh, draft uh, for, what was it called? Settlement and release. What's, what's the amount we're up to, Gretchen, or do you know what the total is on that ABB property? The what is the total that we have invested into, yes? I don't have the exact figure. About 158,000. Sir, uh, or 258,000. 240,000? Yeah. Okay, is there a way, a reason that wasn't addressed in the document, settlement and release? Well, right, because them. as I said at the last meeting, unless uh, you all want to enter into litigation with them, there is no exchange of funds related to it. It's a mutual walk away. And there was no appetite or vote to want to litigate with them. No. That's just that's just poor stewards of the money, the taxpayers. So so just just walk away. Is the agreement the gist of it? Correct. They're not suing you, you're not suing them. So they're the, not coming after you for money, we're not going after them. So the residents them. are out of two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So every month that this board said, I approve the minutes, I approve the general fund, I approve the, the dollar spent for the previous month, every month that happened, we let that go on for 18 months. Every month that we approved those, we were saying yes to, to buying the ABB property. Oh, speak for yourself. No. And then, all, did you say yes on any? On, never said no. yes. Never said yes? Never. For the, any of them? Anything to do with ABB, I never once said yes. No. Speak for yourself. You waited a year, you waited, 
you yourself waited 15 months after you were elected to come to that decision that we were no longer going to do this. I, th I just say that it's wrong. I, I think that we should be trying to recoup some of that 240000 for the residents and be good stewards. Even if we turned that into a park or did, did something with the property, they, spent, park up there. they hauled 2,300 truckloads of dirt out of there, and they spent, what was it, four, six million dollars? No. We, we don't just turn our backs on $240,000 that it's not your money. That's all I have. Any other? I never once said yes to anything about ABM. Did you approve the monthly budgets? What's that? The monthly budgets. So the monthly budgets, when this, the chairman would read, do you approve the minutes and do you approve the general fund invoices from July 1st through July 31st? We don't see all them invoices. Every, every month that you approve, you're saying okay to all of those. Do you? That's right, and I, and I still think that we shouldn't be getting out of that deal. That's all I have. There was uh, one second order that was paperwork on the appeal for the uh, Bernard Schultz that came across our desk or being circulated. Um, how, how has that proceeded, or where's that at now, Gretchen? Did we form a, an appeal? Did so we the appeal deadline was today. Range filed an appeal last week. We filed a notice of appeal on behalf of the township. It's called a protective notice uh, because I understand that both sides want to try to, in very short order, settle um, the matters related to the conditions. So there'll be meetings scheduled this week, hopefully, and a resolution that can come before the board, I hope, for September. So I did call you and illustrate that I spoke with Tom and there was no, uh, we were saying no, we did not desire to appeal. And I did speak with Frank also, and he said that he did have no conversation with anyone in regards to that topic, the Bernard Schultz well. So who did you act on? Why did you act on filing the appeal if we said no and Frank didn't talk to anybody in regards to that topic? My understanding is a majority of the board wants to get the matter resolved, and, and you can't get it resolved without filing the appeal, which is due today before your meeting. And who told you that um, you had a majority of the board I spoke to the chairperson. Okay, that's where, that's where the issue is. If Frank isn't aware of that and didn't have the topic, nobody can just assume to vote and tell him how he's going to be voting. The chairman is one of five board members, and you shouldn't be listening to her, so we have to change the process or something has to be made better. Supervisor Cassiola and myself said no, Frank wasn't aware of it. He just he told me this morning. Is that, is that correct, it's, Frank? Yeah, it's just a cover appeal. There's no cost to it. It's just so we can sit down and hash issues out well, with range resources. There's no cost to this. We have talked to sit down with range at vote. a table face to face rather than, no offense, spending all this money on attorneys and everything. Well, you're doing it. You're filing an appeal. You're filing well, an appeal. appeal. You're going back against what the it's, judge says. Zero. It's a cover appeal. There's a filing fee. It's a notice of appeal. It's one page. And there would be activity in well, the near future next month or so. But in the meantime, the parties can sit down and get it resolved. I understand they want to have discussions this week. No one spoke to Frank. I said no. Tom said no. That's three votes. That's three votes. Yeah, talk to me. That's three votes. So something has to change. Either you cannot be tallying the board or questioning the board or we get that directly from the township manager or yeah just something has to change you didn't have you spoke with the, the chairman one of five supervisors that the told process you to that file I always the appeal. utilize happened you were all informed multiple occasions with multiple emails with my recommendations and you know what you want to do you knew the deadline was before the meeting today um, so I just filed a notice of appeal if you all want to withdraw it in the future you can decide to do that, but at this point, we're going to sit down and have some settlement discussions, which wouldn't be happening. Oh, you, you, no, no, I don't, you don't act by just what the chairman says. Mr. Gizio right, just said he understands it's a protective and appeal, and he wants to resolve. He, Frank said that he didn't know he didn't have any discussions with anyone. That's wrong. I just heard him say Either otherwise. the attorney has to go, the chairman has to go, or something has I, to happen. I did, I did speak with uh, Supervisor Fisher after talking to you. This morning, Eric, and she explained to me it's a. Then cover why did appeal. you tell me you didn't speak with anyone? 
I, after I spoke with you this morning, later on in the day. And Gretchen had already filed it. That it it's a cover appeal. No, I actually just filed it late this afternoon. Okay. After I was told that. Let's do things the right way. I think we are, Eric, but you shouldn't be. No. I, you I'll hold them accountable. When she's not here to defend I'll herself. hold her accountable. You can do that if she you want. She doesn't have the right to tell Gretchen the pulse of the board when she didn't speak with Supervisor Gizio. That's all I have to say. Any more? You're the chairman now. No, I'm asking you anything more. We bring up all this old business. I'll provide you all with a timestamp copy. Thank you. Okay, is there any uh, citizens' comments? Uh, Kara Sheridan, 58 North of Poly. So my question is, did you provide, uh, Eric, did you provide the solicitor with written confirmation that you did not want to pursue this uh, motion that she filed, which she's just trying, from what I can see um, from an outsider's perspective, trying to protect the citizens and giving us the time and use as supervisors the time to make an informed decision? How, did Mr. Savavik or Mr. Cassiola provide notification that they did not want to pursue a protective appeal, which would give the uh, adequate time to make a decision? He chooses not to answer the question. Do you want to address the board? Yeah, I'm addressing Mr. the Chairman, board. Mr. Chairman, could you have her address the board? She asked you. Why should she be questioning me? I, I spoke. I spoke, under the bus who's not I spoke even my here. piece. Super We're not Bavik. campaigning. Bavik. I don't need your campaign material. Are we campaign not campaigning? Material. campaigning? No. Are you sure? I so you I'm know. just I'm just here to say I to to blindly consider some, not having a discussion around a counter set of, of concerns around the Bernard Schultz conditions is concerning to me. The fact that you would blindly accept uh, uh, that just roll over and say whatever they say is okay with no further discussion on the matter is extremely concerning to me. And I'd like to know also if that is also Supervisor Cassiola's position, that you'd just like to accept further, with no further discussion, the conditions that were rejected as part of the appeal. The solicitor asked if we wanted to, to comment if we wanted to appeal. I didn't respond one way or the other. Okay, so he just said you did, and you said you didn't want to. You didn't want to do it, he said. And well, Frank didn't say anything about wanting to do it. But he's standing here and saying three people that there was no... Uh, two said no, and one said he didn't said hear no. on Which the topic. Which two said no? Myself and Tom. Okay, he just said he didn't say anything. He shared with me that... Okay, but he didn't say anything to the no. solicitor. He, what is Mr. she supposed Chair, to do? Do you have to allow him to be on uh, stand, or she can what address is the he, board what if is she, she has any issues? To do? You're throwing her under the bus in front of all these people. Throwing who? The solicitor. She should have the total and know... You're calling her out. ...that she cannot listen to one member of the board... To go and so the one member she should listen to is you? Eric, no. that's been the I line of communication. I, I'm sorry. I gave my vote Eric. and I gave Tom's vote. Well, as Gretchen stated, that's been a line of communication. She's you know, corresponded with the chairman on matters. So I'm saying he's making incorrect statements in front of the audience here that two or three members, it started off with three members, were against it. And now we're down to two members, and now Tom is saying he didn't say that. And I'm just saying I, dis I disagree with the statements that you're making, Supervisor Savatic, and that you're saying incorrect facts at this point in time, and that you can't do that when someone's here not to defend them because Cindy isn't here to say what happened or didn't happen with, with respect to her line of communication. All I know is I called and I shared the information with Gretchen that Tom and I were voting no. Hey, is that Tom's I immediately called Frank and Frank said he didn't have discussions with anyone on the topic. Correct. When I spoke with Gretchen, she stated that she was already filing the appeal. Right. So wait a minute, something's out of line. I'm anxious to see her timeline that she talks about. And I'm anxious to understand why you think the one person- he said no one knew, he said no one had talked to him for or against it. I understand what you're saying. So that's the third vote. So how did Cindy get three votes? I'm, did how she did you get three votes? Did she, assume, did she assume that Frank was gonna vote the way she does? All I'm saying is you're claiming that you, she shouldn't listen to Cindy. That's, she should listen to you instead. No. 
But the my board, point is all it's a five member board. Everybody so have the file. township manager or the assistant manager handle then cha that. Then change the procedures. That's is right. What you're saying, Thank but you. you can't sit here and say that what she did was wrong because every other time that's the way that the it's, process It is has wrong. Been. It is wrong. Either it's the not attorney wrong. needs change, the chairman needs change for doing that, or the process needs change. But if they would have done what you said, then that would have been okay. I'm just saying, I, I think that there are a lot of people aren't as informed on what you're talking about here, and you're mincing words, and you're saying no, no. that three people were not in favor of it, and we just established here that that is totally incorrect. Okay. That the only person that informed Gretchen that they were not in favor of proceeding with an appeal was your, you. And if everyone knew that there was a deadline, then other people should have been informing her directly they were not in favor of an appeal. Otherwise, it would default back. So Frank didn't the, hear from anyone, and he had already had his vote cast for him. But anyway, Something's wrong with that picture. Tommy sat mm -hmm. right okay. there. She needed to call her before the deadline and before And he did filed. not do it. And she had already filed the appeal. Because he, he knew that what he told Cindy was true. Is that not oh, what you just said? Am I missing I just something? want to be clear. I filed the appeal this afternoon at 3.30. You'll have a timestamp copy of the appeal. It was after I was informed and that Tommy there is a majority of the board in favor of way. it. This board will ratify it moving forward. At this point, there's nothing to vote on because we're going to have settlement discussions. And at the next meeting, this board can either decide to ratify moving forward with the appeal and actually filing briefs, or there'll be a settlement that this board can vote on publicly. But that's not going to happen Unless yet. I'm misunderstanding what, the, what you filed for. A very minimal or nominal filing fee was associated with it. You're not saying we're going to draft this big litigation or lawsuit. It's a one-page document. And withdraw it if we want to. That's correct. We have attempt to all get together and have further discussion, which is not something you're able to do before the time of the appeal still needed to be filed, correct? Correct. Okay. That's, and this that's board can do any number of those things moving forward, but a one-page document is filed for a notice of appeal. Okay. And, and the only other thing, you know, I, I have some concerns because there seems to be an issue around costs around litigation. But there seems to be things coming from both directions where we're saying, well, this is something we should spend money in going through further litigation such as ABB property and recuperating money, but over here are things we shouldn't be spending money on doing further litigation around, the, like putting proper protections in place and conditions around the conditional use for Bernard Schultz. I'm just saying, if you're going to have a stance around litigation being bad, you can't have it both ways. It's got to be one direction or the How other. How about we use the 240000 that was wasted and will be lost to pay for our future litigation? How about that? Thank right, you. Thank you. I'd like to say, we, we were all under the impression we were never getting that money back, correct? That's right. Unless, you know, you want to go to court and fight about it, but under that agreement. And I really think fight. us sitting down at a table face to face without range as attorneys, that we can work a lot of this stuff out. I agree. I mean, we, we voted, what, 4-0 four, four to approve the well pad, Bernard Schultz, and you abstained from that vote, right? Is yes. That correct? So, I mean, we all did approve it, Eric. I mean, we just need to sit down and work out some conditional uses with uh, range. I mean. Any more comments from the audience? What's next? Hi, Michelle Stonemark, 40 North of Poly. I just have a quick question. Um, Mr. Savavik, you served as the chairman of the board. If you could address the board, please. Hi, board. Mr. Savavik <laughs> served as your chairman of the board. Was there any circumstances during his tenure as chairman of the board that he, in fact, would call the solicitor himself and tell her a decision that the board had made, such as Ms. Supervisor Fisher did today? And ask. Maybe you could add to that without letting the township manager make aware of, be made aware of it. He knew when I would call the solicitor. So Well, he's not here to answer that, and neither is Cindy, so I don't think that's a, a point that... Well, then maybe you don't have to ask the question. Well, I just want to know. I just want to know if, as your position, when you sat as chairperson, if you ever did exactly what Ms. Fisher did today. Which I guarantee you did. I, no. I guarantee you called did, her and let her. Did you just ask the board and now you're going to make accusations? Well, you refused to answer, did you not? Thank you for your comments. Do I need to sit down now or is it still public comment and freedom of speech? <laughs> just wondering. You'll because. Do, you'll do what you like. 
<laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is very true. And I'm sure we'll see you on the ballot come November. Is that me? Is there any more comments from the audience? <laughs> Done. This meeting is adjourned at 8.30.